There is no single global standard for rating tourist attractions. No five stars or rating systems to advise the tourist of what is worth seeing. Of course, there are review sites. Oh no, D Traveller on TripAdvisor thinks the Colosseum is overrated. M433AN is confident that the Taj Mahal is a bit cliche. The only universally accepted mark of quality is the World Heritage Site status awarded by UNESCO. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, or UNESCO for short, is tasked to protect world heritage and designates the status to man-made and natural landmarks. The idea became popular after Egypt decided to build the Ashwan High Dam in 1954 and it flooded the area of many ancient Egyptian and Nubian temples including the famous Abu Simbel. The artefacts and entire buildings were excavated and moved over 30 years. All this and other endangered sites such as Venice and Barobador Temple in Indonesia prompted the signing of the World Heritage Convention in 1972. The document is signed by all countries apart from Nauru and Liechtenstein, really, agreeing to legally protect sites under their control. UNESCO can provide funding for the conservation and protection of landmarks, but also prescribes different rules and guidelines for their use, modification, what can be built, and how to preserve them. Each country can nominate cultural, natural, or mixed attractions every year. Then, two international councils closely associated with UNESCO decide if the attraction goes on a tentative list. Every year, a World Heritage Committee of 21 state representatives gets together in a new country, reviews the tentative list, and votes on which sites will officially join the list. They even have opening and closing ceremonies. Sounds like a nice job. The committee has 10 selection criteria, but these are pretty broad. Number six, for example, is to be directly or tangibly associated with events or living traditions, with ideas or with beliefs, with artistic and literary works of outstanding universal significance. Out of 195 participating states, 168 have properties, with multiple spanning across more than one country, usually the natural parks. Countries can propose archaeological ruins and religious buildings. There are tons of temples, mosques, cathedrals, monasteries, different castles and fortifications. Also, whole neighbourhoods, historic towns and even cities, such as the capital of Ecuador, Quito. Some of the attractions on the list are the works of famous architects. In 2016, UNESCO included 17 building projects in different countries by Le Corbusier. On the natural list are parks, nature reserves, forests and even entire islands. There are many of the ones you probably expect, like Machu Picchu, the Great Wall of China or Yellowstone National Park. But there are also many more that you likely haven't heard, including some potentially in your own country. In 2023, the list has about 1,200 landmarks, with new ones added annually. Now, 1,200 may sound like a lot, but in reality, it's a very short list. There are many world-famous buildings, spectacular bridges, or beautiful natural sites, which are not on the list. For example, the Golden Gate Bridge, Stockholm's Old Town, or even Mecca are not on the list. Many of these were never proposed to UNESCO for evaluation, or were nominated and then pulled from the list by the country. Very often, the proposed site has been sitting on the tentative list for years. How long? Well, Greece nominated the Petrified Forest of Lesvos in 1988, and it has been sitting since then, waiting for additional reviews. The committee can also put a World Heritage Site on the In Danger list. A landmark becomes endangered if it's under threat due to war, civil unrest, environmental pollution, or significant changes due to new construction or modifications. Being on this bad list pretty much means the landmark is monitored more closely. There are around 50 of these. Sitting on this bad list can also last decades, with the committee reviewing it annually and requesting additional conservation measures or just deleting it. In 2021, UNESCO removed the World Heritage from the Victoria Docks in Liverpool after just 17 years because the area was destroyed almost completely for new buildings, including Everton's new stadium. Liverpool's maritime mercantile city was only the third site to lose its status completely. The others were in Oman and Germany. 1,200 is also not that many if you look at how concentrated these are in Europe and North America. In total, the two regions have almost half of all landmarks at over 560, while for example, the Arab states combined have under 100. One of the explanations is that the selection criteria focus more on the cultural sites, which are 80% of all listings, rather than natural wonders in areas like Africa. 
Another reason might be that certain countries have a disproportionate number of sites and are overrepresented, while others don't invest the time and money to launch a nomination campaign. The top five countries with the most sites are number five, Spain with 50, then Germany and France with 52, China with 57, and on top, Italy with a massive 59. Now the list is expanding, with some years adding over 40 or 50 new landmarks. Most recently, countries typically get one site per year, unless shared with others. So the regional distribution will probably not look too different soon. Also, the big question is what is not included? Well, any modern architecture, new constructions such as skyscrapers, stadiums, concert halls or bridges. Obviously, the criteria is for things to be old for at least a few decades. Some of the newer ones are the architecture of Basilica City from the 1960s or Sydney's Opera House from the 1970s. With support from the Netherlands, UNESCO started another programme to preserve and promote modern architecture, but the official list remains predominantly historical buildings. So is this getting on the list fuss worth the effort? Countries try to get on the list to boost tourism to their attraction and receive brownie points for the country. And it does help with free publicity and global recognition. There is expected funding for restoration and preservation. It can also incentivise authorities to invest in tourist infrastructure and promotion. However, once these sites become trendy, tourists start showing up and the crowds can begin to endanger the conservation efforts. It is a vicious cycle really, with the increased interest leading to over-tourism, forcing UNESCO to prescribe restrictions and threatening to put it on its bad list. One way around this is what Alhambra Palace did. Alhambra is the most visited attraction in Spain, with some 3 million visitors per year, and has had World Heritage status since 1984. It struggled with excessive interest for years, so the attraction gradually started putting daily visitor quotas and limited group visits with name tickets and time slots, without increasing prices significantly. The World Heritage status might not be ideal, and it will be great if it gets more diverse and adds more modern architecture for preservation. It would also help if countries included more robust protection rules in the convention. But it is one of the few successful efforts of countries to work together and try to protect the world's diverse treasures. Plus, everyone loves a list. Thanks for watching. If you can't find your favourite site on the UNESCO list, check out the rest of the channel, where we have hundreds of places worth visiting. Thank you.